and welcome to SVG TV News for Tuesday, October 25th, 2016. I am Jennifer Richardson with the details. Providing documentation that they say shows that Member of Parliament for Central Leeward, Sir Louis Straker, is still active on the United States voters list, lawyer in the case brought against the state on alleged election irregularities, K. Bacchus Batiste, said that Sir Louis must produce evidence that he is not a U.S. citizen. Bacchus Batiste at a media conference held at her client's home in Liu, where there was a petition of some 900 persons in the central Leeward constituency expressing the need to find out if Sir Louis is a citizen of this country, which, which makes him eligible, ineligible to run for office. We want to refer to the voter registration search which was conducted, and the press can have sight of this when, when we are through, which has Mr. Straker's name entered voter information that is in the United States as somebody who is validly on the list and who can vote. It has his name, his date of birth, the zip code where he is living, and his address. Then there is this document, which again you can have sight of, um, which we researched that shows, for example, that Camilo Gonzalez is now inactive, which supports the fact that he, Camilo Gonzalez, gave up his American citizenship. Lo and behold, for Louis Straker, and it gives his numbers and so forth, he is listed boldly as active. As active. So my clients are not being malicious. They are deeply concerned that the law of the land is being flouted by Mr. Mr. Straker, and I think they have a legitimate interest to ask him the question. The NDP candidate for Central Leeward, Ben Exeter, said that he too wants Sir Louis to come clean as he owes this to the people of the constituency. There are too many wrongs being done in Central Leeward. Why is it Central Leeward? Why is everything, why are we here today? Think about it for a second. There's a reason why we're here today. Right? Oh, we need to get to the bottom of this. So what? Okay, so maybe 1994, he renounced or did not renounce. Just simply come forward and said, yes, I did, yes, I did not. So what, if, so, so what if it's a 22-year-old question? This will bring the answer to bear. Either way, people say it will be political, political mud on my face. But to ask a question to get an answer is, is political mud. I'd rather know the answer now than let it go uncertain. So I said to the people sent you I'm here for you and I will be with you to end of this fight. Mm -hmm. Be it tomorrow, or next year, I'm not going anywhere. Because there's a reason why we're in this fight today, and I'm in it for the long haul. Right? As Ronald Reagan once said, trust but verify. Also addressing the issue of the petition was a Bertram Commission, who noted that they will be going to court next month. Transcripts in preparation for the Court of Appeal, because the Court of Appeal must see every document that was used in the court below. Every document that was before, every argument that was put before Mr. Justice Cottle on our side and their side has to be put to the Court of Appeal, and these, these comprise it in one constituency alone. Can you imagine? We had one for Central Leeward and one for North Windward. So it took some time, and that's why the thing is not ready for the Court of Appeal that sat here last month. But be assured it's ready now, and we're ready to go to appeal. And we can have a, a hearing either in October, uh, is in October, no, no, October or in um, Grenada next month. And one hopes that if the application is made, the Court of Appeal will recognize this for what it is. It's an important matter that has to do with the administration of uh, uh, the country, the just running the country, and the composition of Parliament, and let us get an early hearing. Meanwhile, our news team caught up with Sir Louis Straker on his way home to Leu this afternoon and questioned him about the allegations that he is still an active member on the U.S. voters list. Seemingly unbothered by the media conference held in his hometown and the documents presented, Sir Louis shrugged off the accusations and says that the NDP team is making a fool of themselves and he is anxious to face them in court.
documentation that you're still on the registration voters list in the United States of America. What have you to say about this? Well, I can't say anything. If the other folks have evidence of what they want, that I am a citizen of the United States, then proceed to, to, to court and let us take the, the evidence in court as to what they have and what I have. I, I, I've said before and I say it again, they are making an absolute fool of themselves. They should go to um, PR Campbell or listen to Starkey. Uh, they, um, not too long ago you have a, a headline in the news saying that uh, it is not an issue. And they should follow that. I don't understand how grown people could make a fool of themselves like that. Making a complete fool of themselves. Go to court and let us meet there. <laughs> That's all I can say now. I'm anxious for us to go. Anxious. So Louis also says he will not be intimidated by any legal threats brought against him. But th th there's a claim that you know you're being ar arrogant about the whole situation. Well, the trouble is when you, some lawyers, when they write to you, they expect you to shake in your boots and to genuflect to them. When you don't do that, they say you're arrogant. People who know me and who have related to me would never say that I'm an arrogant person. But when you don't shake at some of these lawyers, they think, of, oh, he got a lawyer letter, so therefore he has to be afraid. When you don't do that, they say, oh, he's arrogant. He's not, he's not kowtowing. Uh, he's not bowing down to me. He's not genuflecting. So I, they, they say, I'm, I'm arrogant. But I'm not an arrogant person. People who know me would not say that I'm arrogant. Not at all. Okay. But I'm, I, I'm surprised that they give me seven days are they going to high court. I am amazed that they still can't go to high court. <laughs> what is keeping them back? Major developments are expected to get underway soon in the community of Spring Village in the North Leeward area. Last Thursday afternoon, many persons witnessed the groundbreaking ceremony for the Spring Village Cumberland Bridge Reconstruction and River Embankment Protection Project. Prime Minister Dr. Rav Gonsalves expressed gratitude to the Mexican government for the assistance of U.S. $5 million to bring the project to reality. Nolisha Miller has more in this report. It takes a longer time to prepare the project than to actually build it. The groundbreaking ceremony for the reconstruction of the Spring Village in Cumberland Bridge and River Embankment Protection Project has been welcomed by residents of the area who have been waiting for the commencement of the project. The project is estimated to cost some $13.5 million with support from the Mexican government in the tune of U.S. $5 million. Actual work is expected to commence in March 2017. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez explained that the construction of the bypass bridge will commence on November 10th. He added that the works will be guided by the Trinidad Contractors Limited and that he has every faith that they will perform their duties in an efficient and timely manner. Which for the works which are to be done, it means that Trinidad contractors have to work fast. And I want to say this, it is in their interest that they work even faster than the timelines which they have given because for a contractor time is money. The Prime Minister took the opportunity to outline the many features expected to be derived from the bridge reconstruction. It is going to be 82.35 feet long. It's going to be longer than Hope by 4 feet. It's going to be a two-lane bridge. And you're going to have a pedestrian walkway which is going to be 4 feet wide. It ain't going to be a little thing where you just have to jam up. You're going to have enough space for you to walk properly. He added the bridge is designed to last at least 100 years. Not one of us here will outlive this bridge. And the height of the bridge is going to be 15 feet from below the riverbed. Having enough height to accommodate the raging waters. Dr. Gonzalez further stressed that the ULP administration has created history with the construction of a vast amount of bridges across the country in such a short period of time. Never in the history of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, never has any government ever 
built so many bridges and there is no government that has built so many bridges in so short a period of time and the managing director of the trinidad contractors limited Rameshwar mahabir expressed his gratitude to have the opportunity to contribute to the development of svg we will do our best to maintain good relationship with the people in the village uh, we cannot promise to employ everybody but what is reasonable even as some rotational system that uh, our project manager will bend over backwards trying to satisfy the needs once we ourselves can maintain a certain level of efficiency get the job done in a timely manner because this job is 12 months and it's going to be tough order but we intend to do everything that we can to do it the project is expected to be completed by october 2017. Alicia miller the evening news Meanwhile, some residents of Spring Village expressed their views on what the reconstruction of the bridge and river embankment symbolizes. Well, it benefited me in a way that, you know, to, um, because of the storm, the past storm recently, we don't want that situation to happen again. And then for the whole of Nali, what is well benefited to us, you know, because right now it's not in a good condition. So we are so happy that it's right, you know, in the making and um, that the traffic is going to flow even much better having the two way. It's going to benefit everybody in Spring Village. It's a very nice, nice village. I think it's going to be very good for all of us. So we, we endorse anything that helps in the development of the village. Um, well, I'm feeling very good. It is something that we have been longing for, having been affected in 2013 floods. And to see something like this come on board, we, we really have to really say a thank you. Yeah. And how do you see it benefiting North Leeward? It will benefit North Leeward and Sinders as well as a whole, knowing that um, this, this bridge also transit goes from Lower Leeward um, into Kingston, and this is the only route that we could use. So once that is not, once that is built, we are well on board to do other works in Kingston. Yeah. I think it's a very good initiative because it's something that we have wanted for a while now. You know, from the um, 2013 December floods, so we were affected pretty badly. So I think that constructing a bridge would be a pretty good thing for the community. Warning the authorities that they will not tolerate educational facilities with what he describes as having gruesome problems, President of the Teachers Union Oswald Robinson says the organization will protect the interests of all educators throughout the country. In a recent interview with SVG TV News, Robinson says that the union will be investigating matters that have been brewing for some time with the focus of getting them resolved. So this is just the smoke. The fire is yet to come because we have a lot of other stuff that we have to deal with. And maybe we could talk about Adelphi School. That's only one. We have a list of other schools that we have to look at. Kingston Anglican School, Evisham Methodist, Large Village. These are schools that have far more gruesome problems. I love that word used by the minister, gruesome in describing New Delphi, but they are far more schools. So those principals who are covering, we have to protect our teachers and uncover what is being covered. So we are saying to the authorities, make sure you do your work. Make sure they work in the environment. They are healthy, they are safe. The teachers' union is coming again and again and again. We are not going to give up. Robinson says the union is currently strategizing their tactics to address issues of injustice. He highlighted the appointment of teachers as another of their front burner concerns. The issue of appointments is another issue that we are coming at. Too many of our teachers are there for too long. As the old people say, don't care. They are there for too long, not receiving the appointments. And we would be taking a step, even if we have to go for judicial review. We are going. Because justice is part of the agenda the teachers union that is high on the agenda it's a priority when teachers are not appointed within reasonable time it affects their moral it de dehumanizes them also and we can't allow the state to dehumanize our members it's unfair grossly unfair and it's an injustice so we will stand up as our motto says united we stand 
hand in hand. And that is what we are doing. As a matter of fact, you see us in this meeting now, we are strategizing for the next move. So we are sending this message out to the authorities. The teachers' union is in celebratory mode since one of its members won a four-year-long legal battle against the government. The ruling by Justice Esco Henry last week states that former president of the union, Otto Sam, was illegally, irrationally, and wrongfully subjected to disciplinary measures, such as suspensions, transfers, and an eventual termination. Aimed at providing encouragement and foresight to readers by building awareness on how they can change their mindset, Dr. Julian Jules Ferdinand last evening launched his new book dubbed The Journey, Destined for Greatness. Nikita Tony has more in this report. Destined for Greatness, that's the name of the new book by Dr. Julian Jules Ferdinand, which was officially launched here last evening at the French's house. In her review of the publication, manager of the St. Vincent Cooperative Bank, Lavon Velux, commended Dr. Ferdinand for his influential work and continued education towards the development of all the intentions, noting that the book of essays serves as a guide to making SVG a better place. Jules is pleading with us as a collective, as a village, as a people, to work assiduously towards achieving a society where we live in harmony, where each one teaches one, and where we are encouraged to use our strengths for the greater good. He skillfully quotes from the teaching of the good book to remind us that while we have become modernized in many ways, the things we need to institute to improve on the quality of our existence were documented many, many, many eons ago in that almost forgotten book called the Bible. Felix highlighted that the book motivates persons to be more confident in their talents as they strive for change. This book highlights the fact that we have strayed from our core values by engaging in unprincipled behavior which we seek to justify. This book challenges us to reach within to identify and extract our talents which may be buried deep in our subconscious. The journey destined for greatness says it all. We need to stop being ostriches by taking our heads out of the sand, take a critical view of what pertains, determine what needs to be fixed, and build a team to fix our problems. Some may say we are too far gone, but that is a defeatist attitude. Read the book. Help can be found within. Ferdinand's daughter and editor of the book, Sabrina Ferdinand, complimented the book's content, pointing out that it prompts the reader to reach for greatness, while at the same time ensuring that they reap maximum benefits along their journey. The journey, I believe, will be beneficial to all readers, but especially it challenges young persons. I have the opinion that a nine-year-old can comfortably read this book, so too a 90-year-old can derive benefits from it. We are all destined for greatness in our own ways. So too we embark on varying journeys. The book, I believe, is an inspirational tool aiding us in seeing things from a different point of view. Thanking his supporters for their continued encouragement, Dr. Julian Jules Ferdinand emphasized the need for talents to be more appreciated and nurtured, especially among the nation's youth. And I continue to write. I love writing, I love research, I love sharing my thoughts. And so I'm grateful for my entire family for their, their understanding um, and their, their support throughout the exercise. And for all of you for coming out tonight, research in the United States in Harlem a few years ago showed that there was a significant relationship between academic achievement and the students who were involved in music. This is music. This is our music. And there will be a corresponding Glow, growth. Nikita Tony reporting for SVG TV News. Live within your means. That's the advice given to Vincentians by veteran lawyer Panel Campbell QC on his The Law and You program on Monday night on SVG TV. Campbell noted that in the past, persons were thought from a young age to make do with what was available and to be content. But due to the influence of modern consumerism, a spirit to attain what one may not necessarily be able to afford, it's prevalent. The Queen's Council said many parents who cannot afford various luxury items for their children feel that they are not doing the best they can 
as their children's pairs may possess these very items and warned that this line of thought could have a negative effect on your children. Now this has some terrible consequences when these children grow up and leave school because they get into the mentality where they must have X, Y, and Z in keeping with their pairs. That when it cannot be provided legitimately, illegitimate means are found for them to have it. So many of the young generation resort to theft, deception, and all sorts of unwanted behavior to get what they think they need. Given the example of school trips, which many parents may not be able to afford, Campbell encouraged parents to speak with their children on things they can or cannot afford. But there clearly is pressure on the students because if you're a member of a class and the class is going on a tour and your parents can't afford to send you, you feel badly, you feel a bit embarrassed that you can't go. But we parents have to insist to our children that if the parents can't afford to do something for them, they have to be satisfied. The children have to be made to understand that there are certain things which parents can afford and certain things which parents cannot afford. Giving persons across Latin America and the Caribbean region the opportunity to recover their vision, the governments of the Boliv Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and Cuba, through their International Miracle Mission, formerly known as Vision Now, has once again conducted eye surgeries here in SVG with checkup clinics held at the Milton Cato Memorial Clinic. Nikita Tony has more in this report. Efforts of solidarity in the form of eye care services, the governments of Venezuela and Cuba, through their International Miracle Mission Program, has over the last weekend offered some 25 incensions the opportunity to correct their vision. Speaking at the clinic session earlier today, Venezuelan Ambassador to SVG, Yuri Pimento, thanked Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez for allowing his government the opportunity to partner on such a timely initiative. It was an idea of uh, 11 years ago of President Chavez and, and uh, President Fidel Castro of Cuba and since then uh, Venezuela and Cuba worked together to, to uh, give this opportunity to the people. Some of these problems, uh, cataracts and trillium, are really, uh, they are not very difficult to, to, to correct, but if no one gives the opportunity to, to the people, they lose the vision. That's why it's called Miracle Mission, because sometimes people who didn't have, with cataracts, they couldn't see anything, and in just a few seconds, when you remove the cataracts, you recover all, the, all, all of your visions. Highlighting that over 6 million surgeries have been conducted over the past 11 years, the ambassador outlined that the program has been a major impact on countries across the region. Since last year, we started what we call International Miracle Mission, and you send our teams to, to the countries. And the first country that uh, the Venezuelan team uh, was at it was in St. Vincent uh, in April last year. It was the first country we came in. What we are doing now, it's finishing that process. Because last year, we, we made 264 surgeries, eye surgeries, here in St. Vincent and in the Grenadines. And and uh, some people needed a second uh, surgery. You can't do it immediately, but now uh, the time has passed. Uh, we, we came back and we are finished what we started last year. Ambassador Pimentel noted the importance of following up on the progress of patients outlining that the surgery in itself does not end their mission. Uh, be, at the beginning we made uh, lots of tests, we, we made pre-surgery pre tests, then we had the surgeries and in about four weeks we will come back and uh, that's what we're doing 
today, a post-surgery check, but we are coming back in four weeks to, to check that everything is okay with the patients and we hope that in the future you can do another uh, uh, another process from zero starting uh, in other parts of the of the island uh, of the St. Vincent and Grenadines that uh, we, we didn't uh, go this time. We, have, we expect to go on the, the next process of Miracle Mission, the program Vision now.